What's going on guys, welcome back to the Yorkshire Modeler and we have issue 78 part 2 of the Battleship Bismarck. So if you've not seen the last video yet, issue 78 part 1, um, this build for this issue is quite substantial. You've got all the bits for the um, funnel, you've got actually attaching the funnel um, to the superstructure and then loads of other details to go on to um, onto the funnel as well. You do the four masts, so I thought I'd split this video into two parts this issue sorry into two videos so um when i recorded it i recorded it all in one go so um we're now going to cut back to me about five days ago recording the video um for the build so here we go next is attaching the funnel to the superstructure so obviously we've got all the cables there from what we've built on this bit of the superstructure, we've now got to thread some cables through. So, place the forward superstructure assembly on your worktop, take the funnel and thread its three cables uh, through the opening in the superstructure deck where indicated by the arrow, which is basically that little keyhole bit just in there. So I'll thread those through now. Obviously the small end of the uh, funnel has to go facing forward so it'll fit in like that um fit the funnel onto the forward tube structure so that it butts up against the bridge deck so that will go in like that and then you might just have to bend your superstructure a little bit just to get everything aligned up properly because that won't go in like that there we are so that's in that wasn't as bad as i thought that actually um holding the funnel assembly in place carefully turn the work over uh, so you can access the underside of the superstructure. Use two PWB screws. Um, flange screws to fix the funnel in place as shown. So I've already opened the bag of the screws. So I've got them just here. So what I'll do, I'll tip this up this way. I'll hold that funnel in place. And then, crikey, where you're fixing it to is those two holes just there. Now what you need to do is try, I'm not going to tip it all the way over because there's a lot of photo etch. On the other side and I did just hear some of that scraping along the uh, the worktop so I'm just going to put that screw in and then just screw that in that's how that's nice and tight so that's one And then do the same thing again, tipping that over. And then just same thing again with the other screw, holding the funnel in place, just so you've got something that you can push that funnel down and tighten that screw up. There we go. So no photo etch has broke off couple of little bits that have bent slightly but they're easy enough to bend back into position so there you go you've got those two screws in and attached there now final assembly of the funnel and the foremast so we've uh, screwed the funnel into place now we need to take this part just here which is the um foremast platform um Fit the foremast base, which is this one that we've just got here, between the forward superstructure, level with the Admiral's deck, and the funnel as shown. Glue the ends of the foremast base in place. So, Admiral's deck there. So, this is going to go, basically, between that little cutout just there, and then the equal position on the other side of the funnel. So, I'm assuming it will go in place like that. Is that right or not? Doesn't look like it, does it? Let me have a quick look at proper look at the instructions. Yep, right. Okay, so that needs to go on top of. So on where you've got the um, the searchlights, the actual bit that the searchlights on. There's a little kind of bit where it drops and then there's a little flat platform that's where it's got to go on that side so the easiest thing to do is probably to glue that bit on first and then glue the other side on fit it in 
that way round. That should fit there. He says, where's his tweezers? Where's his tweezers? So, tilt that up like that, drop that onto there, like that, and then remove it back into position. Like that, there. So that goes in there, like that. And that's glued in nicely. So, uh, let's take railing C2. Let's see which one C2 is. Uh, C1, C2. So C2 is on this little fret just here, and it's the second one along, which is labelled up as 2 anyway. It has to be bent to fit around the curve at the base of the foremast, also see step 7. So C2 will go on the side that is currently facing you guys, so it'll be this bit just inside here. So I'm just going to fit this, flip this around a little bit. That'll go that way. And then just, I'm just going to bend this just around my thumb. Just a little bit to try and get a bit of a bend in there. That should do it actually. So, then, now there is a little step in these parts as well. That's obviously just because of the um, step in the shape of this platform oh balls so i'm just going to move this back a little bit <laughs> there we go right so that's the first railing in um and then we do the same thing with c1 which is the other railing side for this part here and this one will bend the other way round And then we'll glue this one in. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing with this one. I know you guys can't see it, and I'm really sorry that you've not got a better angle. Um, I'm getting the one that's closest to the middle of the railing, uh, the platform put in first. Then I'm getting the other one centered in like that. And then what you can do is use. Like I'm using a pair of pliers to hold it into position on this one. Um, let me swing this around this way a little bit. And then what you can do is you can use the pliers between the two parts just to push them into the relevant holes. Like that. And then you've got it in properly. So hopefully you can see there not very well. I'll see if I can show you on this camera. That's a little bit better. So you can see there the two um, the two railings in there as well. Uh, take the rigging spar, part four from the same sprue. Um, identify the four tabs and bend them at right angles as shown. So let's just get this off of the fret first. So that's that one off. Now the four tabs, there's three. Let me show you on this one. So there's three tabs along the bottom edge here. And then there's one just there, right in the middle. So with these, we have to bend them straight up. So I'm just going to do this one at a time. One, two, three. And then the last one, which I'm going to have to get me tweezers in there for and bend that up like that sometimes as well if you've not got a lot of room just getting a slight bend on them is enough and then you can just do that last bit with your finger or get a you know a, a better pair of pliers that's usually a good idea um right so now we've got the mast 
So take the foremast, which is this one just here. Uh, check, whoops, check the fit of the two central tabs of the spar uh, near the top of the mast. Uh, the tabs fit into the lower two of the three holes and then glue in place. So when it says the lower two of the three holes, obviously you've got the three holes there, so it'll be that one and that one. So, and that's two tabs that are on the middle of this uh, rigging spar here. Now, the way to glue this round as well is you need to glue it that way around. So, another close look on that one, just there. And try as best as you can to get the part, the, the photo etch part level. I haven't managed it, but it's not a brilliant fit on that. I, I don't like it when it's like that, when it's not a brilliant fit. Uh, right, so that's that part done. We're nearly there. Um, cut part three, which is the uh, last part left on this sprue, uh, this fret, and it's got like a loop in it. So, uh, cut part three from frame seventy-eight point six. Bend it into shape as you fit it in place. Loop the loop in part C three fits over the top of the mast, and then the arms bend down to the sides, as shown in the image, so that the ends of the arms fit beneath the tabs at the end right okay so so we need to fit this as we actually install it onto the mast and that's another sprue dead so what i'll do we just i'll move the superstructure out of the way for a minute we loop that loop that's just in there if you can see it clearly i'll show it on the green there there you go so that little loop will go straight over the top there like that And then, where the two triangular parts kind of gaps are there, whoops, move that a little bit, little bit James. Um, so where the triangular bits are, so that one there, will hook underneath that little, um, show you on this camera, will hook underneath where you've got that little um, kind of tab that we bent down earlier on. that bit will look like when that's all attached okay so now we need to do the antenna which is on the next uh, next fret of photo etch so um, this has to be bent in a very specific way to give you the um, correct shape for the antenna so all I'm gonna do I'm just gonna bend the parts in what looks like the right way and then we'll just have to go from there, lads and lasses. Right, now this bit goes over the top of the mast onto that little peg. So on the very top of the mast, just there, that one will show you. No. And um, there's a little uh, kind of crescent moon shape. Not crescent moon, like a half moon type shape. That's where this antenna sits over. So what I'm going to do is put a dab of glue right on the top. And then I'm just going to plonk this on top of that. There we go. So that's the... Put that there. That's the antenna on there as well. So... Fit the base of the mast into the central hole in the base plate. Uh, the mast also fits into the recess in the mast's support platform from frame, uh, from frame 57.6. Note that the ladder um, is on the side of the superstructure. Right, I've got to put the ladder on as well, so I've missed that step out, you stupid boy. Okay, so let's fit the ladder on before we do anything else on this, because it looks like we'll need to fit the ladder on before we can uh, glue it onto the frame right, so we can just bend the ladder straight opposite uh, straight up like we have done before so that's that one off now this says for us just to bend up all of these little tabs on the side of the ladder to fit the ladder 
up the back of the foremast, which means it will fit over the spar rigging point. Let's do... So we also have to bend the first rung of the ladder at either end by the look of it as well, so we can get to the right angle. Yeah, that's it. Right, so I'm just going to glue this ladder onto the mast then. So the ladder goes into the other two holes that are on the mast. There we are. So that's the ladder. Let's see if I can show you better on that one. There you go. Ladder all attached on there. So now going back to step 16. The ladder is on the side uh, facing away from the forward superstructure. When you're happy, glue it in place. So where the ladder is going to sit, is in this hole here if you can make it out on camera yep so that little hole there is where the base of the la of the bast will go and it will then sit up into this little groove here on this part so if i just pull this up a little bit just to show you so it's going to sit in that little kind of semicircular groove can i get that on the right shot I'll try it on this one so yeah, that little semicircular groove there. And then the mast ladder will need to face towards the stern. So towards the funnel, basically. And the little, um, the little rounded part, just that bit there on the ladder, that bit, will sit against that platform so I'm just going to put a drop of glue on there as well because that will hold that in a little bit better there like that so that's in and attached oh we're on the final stretch now an hour in um right cut the first of the two long struts d1 from the frame uh, the small peg at the base fits into a hole in the foremast base. The wider tab at the top fits into the vertical recess on the rear of the superstructure. So, these are the last two bits of photo etch um, on the sprues, at least. We do get another two bits, which are those two bits that I've just brought into camera. They're just down there. Um, so, now these bits are going to be quite interesting to get off of this sprue. <laughs> I need to get a proper pair of photo wedge cutters, if such a thing exists. Right, the small end, the wider tab fits into the vertical recess. So, let's see where these two bits are going. These two parts will go in the two little holes right next to the, uh, right next to the mast. And then apparently there are two small rectangular holes in the superstructure oh yeah they're not really holes they're more like indents so glue on the tab oops glue on the tab and i'm going to put a strip of glue along that edge grab hold of that with me pliers so i can get a good bit of grip on it plop that up into there that into there like that and then I'm just going to drop that part into that little hole there that part onto there like that just use a bit of that uh... so I'm going to use a bit of me um, setting solution for the super glue so it's just the vital bond stuff that I use you do want to be careful with it though, using it indoors. Um, don't put too much on because if you've not got enough ventilation, you're going to get high. Very, very high. And or have a really bad headache. So. Put the second bracing strut in. Like 
There we go. Right, so that's those two struts on them. And then we've got the last two little bits of photo etch now. Um, fit the railing along the starboard side of the foremast when you're happy glue in place. And then fit the railing on the port side and glue in place as shown. So, the starboard side is the one with the kind of little dent in it. And then the uh, port side is just the straight piece. You do need to put a slight bend in that just to get it onto the right shape. Um, this video is already an hour long, or I've been recording for an hour, um, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, it's just gluing a couple of bits of photo etch on. I'll show you in the next video what it all looks like. That is the only thing that is bugging me about this build. Um, so far, the Spitfire, which I've got the next four issues of just there, um, so far the Spitfire has been really good at keeping you know the steady stream of parts coming. Um, the F40 has been the same. I know that's started coming out to customers again now after the uh, the issues with COVID. So hopefully those videos, I've not received the parts yet. So hopefully they should be up soon uh, once I get them. Um, Yeah, the, the Bismarck, there's a lot of photo etch on it. Fair enough. But when we've had like eight or nine issues that are just attach a label to a cable and then don't do anything else, it's a bit of a piss take. You know, we're spending a lot of money on this model and some weeks we're getting nothing, and then other weeks we're getting like an hour's worth of footage. I've I've just looked at my camera. I'm on one hour and one minute recording. It's just not it's not good. This model's going to look brilliant when it's done, and the amount of hours are going to show on camera because I've recorded them all. But you know, I just think it's excessive. It's excessive to send you this many parts with this much small intricate detail to do, and then. Like, for example, next week, we just get a, a hull panel. You know, it's not... To me, it's it's silly to do this amount of photo etch and then next week just get a hull panel that we screw on. You know, comment down below if you agree. Please. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my little rant that I said I was going to have. Um, please remember to like, share and subscribe to the Yorkshire Modeler for more weekly model building geekiness and I will see you in the next video for the Battleship Bismarck which should hopefully be up um, early next week. So until then guys, please remember, happy modelling and stay safe.